It is very rare these days for a cat to spontaneously form a black hole, but you want to be prepared. So, what if your cat became a black hole? A black hole is an object of such gravitational profundity that even light cannot escape its clutches. Imagine a flea leaping from your cat. Assume that your cat has a mass of one kilogram and is perfectly spherical with a radius of 0 0.1 meters. We'll treat as negligible the mass of the Earth, air resistance, and the laws of probability. On the surface of the cat, the flea has a weight which is given to us by Newton's law of gravitation. The flea also has a gravitational potential energy. The potential energy is maximized to zero as the distance from the center of the cat increases toward infinity. Everywhere else, this energy has a negative value. The flea also has an energy due to its motion, kinetic energy. At the idealized infinite distance from the cat, its motion and therefore its kinetic energy is zero. Thus, the total energy is zero. The flea leaps, reaching some pinnacle of height, and then is drawn back toward the cat. If it leaps hard enough, it never reaches that pinnacle. The required initial speed for such a leap is what we call the escape velocity. Because the total energy at infinity is zero, and energy is conserved, the total energy will always be zero. We can manipulate this equation to give us an expression for velocity. That velocity is our escape velocity. Notice that the mass of the flea has been excised from this expression. We don't really care about the masses of fleas. The escape velocity from the cat is the same for fleas, porcupines, and watermelons, as well as llamas. Using our assumed figures for the mass and radius of the cat, as well as the standard value for Newton's gravitational constant, g, we obtain the desired result. It's hard to imagine anything outside of a government bureaucracy failing to achieve such a velocity. Therefore, we can assume that the flea is not bound to the cat by gravity. What if we set the escape velocity to a maximum, the speed of light? Replacing v with c in our previous equation, rearranging, we can arrive at an expression for r. We'll now apply to our expression for radius the figures we've used previously as well as the known velocity of light. This gives us the radius to which a one kilogram cat must be compressed in order to become a black hole. This radius depends only on one variable, the mass of the cat. We can use this expression to connect the radius of any black hole to its mass. This doesn't just work for feline black holes. Given that the radius of a hydrogen atom is of the order of 10 to the negative 11 meters, we can expect most cats to avoid any situation that would compress them to this volume. Furthermore, once the cat's size has diminished to about 10 to the negative 15 meters, gravity begins to lose its significance. Nuclear forces within the cat are now 10 to the power of 40 times stronger than gravity. Ignoring this inconvenient fact for a moment, let's get back to our flea. It is now trapped to the cat, and it has a weight of 10 to the 52 times its weight before meeting the feline black hole. Suppose the flea has a length of 0.001 meters from head to tail. Using what we already know, we can compare the force of gravity on the flea at, at 10 to the negative 27 meters and 10 to the negative 27 plus 0.001 meters. The differential is of the order of 10 to the 48. This differential is what we call the tidal forces on the cat, and in this case we have a special term for it, spaghettification. None of this can be good for any flea. 
Therefore, natural selection has favored fleas, which avoid cats smaller than hydrogen atoms. That barrier of no return is called the black hole's event horizon. The radius is called the Schwarzschild radius, after the physicist who first figured it out. However, the name Schwarzschild also translates into English as black shield, which is kind of cool. While your cat is unlikely to become a black hole anytime soon, something slightly larger, say a star, possibly could. The gases that comprise a star want to sink to the star's center. Stars have a lot of gravity, more than most cats. However, as the gases are drawn inward, their atomic nuclei get smushed together. This smushing leads to nuclear fusion, which releases a whole whack of energy. That energy release tends to push the gases outward. An understanding therefore exists between gravity, which wants to pull stuff inward, and radiation, which wants to push stuff outward. And the star, the star maintains its size. Some stars, however, eventually burn out. No amount of smushing can squeeze any more energy out of the exhausted atomic nuclei. Then gravity wins. The star collapses. Black hole. Our flea undergoes spaghettification long before it reaches the feline event horizon. However, this equation shows that the Schwarzschild radius is linearly dependent on mass. The mass of a homogeneous entity depends upon its volume, and that volume increases with the cube of its physical radius. As a black hole accumulates matter, its Schwarzschild radius increases faster than its physical radius. The event horizon of a supermassive black hole may extend far beyond its spaghettification point. It is possible, therefore, to cross the event horizon of a supermassive black hole and not even notice. This would be the case with the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Some scientists think that our entire universe could be within the event horizon of a super de duper black hole. Could ours be one of many universes residing within a parent universe? My cat may never become a black hole, but she certainly thinks that she is at the center of the universe. Bob's your uncle. Thanks for watching. Cheers and click things. However, this equation shows that the Schwarzschild ra it's Schwarzschild no amount of smushing, <laughs> no amount of smushing, smushing?